Microsoft is going nuclear. They recently signed the 20-year power purchase agreement with Constellation for the reopening of part of the Three Mile Island nuclear plant. This plant was actually responsible for one of the biggest nuclear accidents in US history, and Microsoft plans to use it to power their AI systems. Next, Jim Fan, senior research scientist and lead of AI agents at NVIDIA, recently talked about the robotics industry's GPT-3 moment that he believes is coming in the next two to three years. In this video, we'll take a look at what exactly this GPT-3 moment is and why it's going to completely change everything. Last Lastly, in a hearing before the US Senate, former OpenAI researcher William Saunders warned that AGI could be built in as little as three years. We'll take a look at some of the interesting things he had to say, especially about OpenAI in this video, as well as the imminent risks he claims AGI poses to humanity. So jumping right into it, as this article states, Microsoft and Constellation signed power purchase agreement for Three Mile Island Restart. Under the recent agreement, Microsoft will purchase energy from Three Mile Island to power its data centers in the state. Joe Dominguez, president and CEO of Constellation Energy, said powering industries critical to our nation's global economic and technological competitiveness, including data centers, requires an abundance of energy that is carbon-free and reliable every hour of every day. And nuclear plants are the only energy sources that can consistently deliver on that promise. So we're getting to a point where where the power needs of these massive AI systems are becoming so great that companies are now turning to nuclear energy. This comes with its own set of risks. Of course, we all know about the Chernobyl disaster and the atrocities that caused, as well as the Three Mile Island accident that was nowhere near as bad, but there are also some major benefits to nuclear energy that can't be ignored. Currently, all nuclear power plants use nuclear fission as a way to generate power, and while it's much more reliable and effective as opposed to traditional methods for large-scale operations, like powering an AI data center for example, it's also extremely capital intensive. This is why only the largest AI companies like Microsoft could even think of doing something like this. They clearly believe in the potential of AI, or else they wouldn't be investing billions into this project. There's also always the hope that we will achieve usable nuclear fusion, which could theoretically give us an unlimited supply of energy. Nuclear fusion is the process of merging atoms together to create energy, as opposed to splitting them apart like with nuclear fission. It results in a much greater release of energy, but it's also basically impossible to contain, at least for now. Sam Altman is a big proponent of this type of energy, and has invested considerable amounts of his own money into it. Usable nuclear fusion has been a long-standing unsolved problem, and only now with the advent of AI is it becoming potentially immediately profitable for companies to explore. If we can figure out a way to harness the energy from nuclear fusion, which is something AI could potentially help with, then power constraints will literally no longer be a thing. Other companies are starting to hop on this wave as well. Google CEO Sundar Pichai stated in a recent interview that Google is looking into new sources of energy to power its AI systems, one of them being small modular reactors, or SMRs, which are literally just smaller nuclear plants. We are now working on uh, over one gigawatt data centers, which I didn't think we would be thinking <laughs> about just a, you know, maybe even two years earlier, right? And all of this needs energy. Uh, I, I think in the short term, it is challenging. In the medium to long term, I'm optimistic uh, because I think it's also bringing a, a lot of capital investment to, you know, developing new sources of energy, right? We, we invested very early in wind and solar, because we saw the opportunity there. And today, many of our biggest data centers operate at around 90% carbon-free basis, sure. right? And we recently, in our Nevada data center, uh, we are running it now with using geothermal, right? And, and so we brought a new source, and, and we want others to do that too. I see the amount of money going into SMRs, uh, you know, this uh, small modular reactors for nuclear sure. energy. And so when I look at the capital and the innovation going in, I'm optimistic in the medium to long term. So I have a feeling we're going to be hearing a lot more about nuclear energy in the AI space in the coming years, and it might even cause some controversy given the apparent risks, even though it's generally very safe. I'm curious to hear what you guys think of this though. Do you support these AI companies in pursuing the use of nuclear energy to power their AI systems, or do you think the risks are too great to be putting this technology in their hands? Moving on, we also had a new model release from Microsoft. Here they announced GRIN, Gradient Informed Mixture of Experts. This model is only 6.6 .6 billion parameters and achieves exceptionally good performance across a diverse set of tasks, particularly in coding and mathematics tasks. So if you don't already know about mixture of experts, it's a commonly used method to make AI models more efficient. In simple terms, it's a combination of multiple AI models or experts that are particularly good in one area, like coding or math for example, all working in tandem. Then there's a router or gate network that essentially decides which expert to feed your query to get the best, most correct answer in the most efficient way possible. This results in significantly better performance for smaller models, as you can see from these benchmarks. It's on par 
par with, or even better than models much larger than it, even beating GPT-40, which is roughly 1.8 trillion parameters on certain benchmarks. You can literally run a model of this size on your cell phone, which is kind of insane if you think about it. We also had a new model release from Mistral. They announced Pixstral 12b, their first ever multimodal model. This is another very small model that does exceptionally well for its size on common benchmarks, and is indicative as to where AI models are headed in the future. These smaller, more efficient AI models are becoming more prevalent as new methods of distilling knowledge continue to be discovered. It's why we're seeing insane performance coming out of recent small models, like the ones we just looked at, as well as OpenAI's O1 Mini. And as companies continue to release their APIs, like Mistral just did with their new model release, eventually almost everyone will be able to run these on their local devices and build whatever they want with it. Chinese company Alibaba is also seeing success with smaller models. They recently announced Quen 2.5, a party of foundation models. The release consists of a ton of new models, ranging from a tiny 500 million parameter model to a larger 72 billion parameter model. The 72 billion parameter model performs on par with state-of-the-art open source models like Mistral Large 2 and even Llama 3.1's 405 billion parameter model. According to artificial analysis, it's actually the best performing model in terms of model intelligence compared to all open source models. It's even rivaling some of the current state-of-the-art closed models like GPT-40 and Cloud 3.5 Sonnet, which is honestly really impressive. So the AI race continues to heat up. Both the US and China are going full throttle ahead on AI, and it'll be interesting to see how this all shakes up. In other AI news, senior researcher at NVIDIA Jim Fan discussed the future of humanoid robotics in a recent interview with Sequoia Capital. Here's a short clip from the interview where he talks about the robotics industry's coming GPT-3 moment. Take a look. What do you think will define what a GPT-3 moment in AI robotics looks like? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, I would like to think about robotics as consisting of two systems, system one and system two. So uh, that comes from the book Thinking Fast and Slow, uh, where system one means um, this uh, low-level motor control that's unconscious and fast. Uh, like, for example, when I'm grasping this cup of water, I don't really think about how I move the fingertip at every millisecond. Uh, so that would be system one. And then system two is slow and deliberate, and it's more like reasoning and planning that actually uses the, the, the conscious brain power that we have. So um, I think the GPT-3 moment uh, will be on the system one side. And my favorite example is the verb open. So just think about the complexity of the word open, right? Like opening the door is different from opening window. It's also different from opening a bottle or opening your phone. But for humans, we have no trouble understanding that open means different things when you're interacting. Uh, it means different motions when you're interacting with different objects. But so far, we have not seen a robotics model that can generalize on a low-level uh, motor control on these verbs. So I hope to see a model that can understand these verbs in their abstract sense and can generalize to all kinds of scenarios that make sense to humans. Um, and we haven't seen that yet, but I'm hopeful that this moment could come in the next two to three years. So this ability to generalize and understand abstract concepts, as he mentions, is something humanoid robots currently struggle with. It's crucial for robots to be able to do this, for them to actually be useful in the real world, especially when dealing with unique and constantly changing environments like homes or job sites. Jim Fan is hopeful this will be achieved in the next two to three years, and claims it would be as big of a moment as GPT-3 was for LLMs. If we can give humanoid robots the ability to truly generalize and adapt to new environments, then all that's left to do is to deploy them at a massive scale and let them learn as they go. It's important to remember that that once one humanoid robot learns a new skill, the entire fleet can then acquire that new skill as well, kind of like a hive mind. And along with the fact that the cost of these humanoid robots relative to their potential productivity increase, especially given the fact that they constantly get better over time, is truly a no-brainer investment for pretty much any company. I covered this more in depth in a previous video, but essentially just a 5% increase in productivity over the average worker would allow a company to justify purchasing one of these humanoid robots for a maximum of $16,000, which is roughly what these robots are expected to cost. Obviously, there's going to be some tasks that these humanoid robots simply can't do, but once they can generalize, which could be in the next few years, there's going to be a lot of tasks they can do. Now, we got to talk about this recent hearing before the US Senate where ex-OpenAI employee William Saunders spoke out about his time at OpenAI and how close they are to building AI systems capable of causing critical harms to humanity. This article from The Decoder covers the main highlights from this hearing really well, so let's take a look. It states here, William Saunders, a former OpenAI employee, made serious accusations against
against his former employer during the Senate hearing. Saunders claimed that OpenAI neglected security in favor of rapidly developing artificial intelligence. Without rigorous testing, developers might miss this kind of dangerous capability, Saunders warned. According to Saunders, an artificial general intelligence system, AGI, could be developed in as little as three years. He pointed to the performance of OpenAI's recently released O1 model in math and coding competitions as evidence. OpenAI's new system leaps from failing to qualify to winning a gold medal, doing better than me in an area relevant to my own job. There are still significant gaps to close, but I believe it is plausible that an AGI system could be built in as little as three years. So we're truly entering into some very interesting times. While I was making this video, I was kind of taken aback by all the insane stories in the AI space from just this week. I mean, from nuclear energy to humanoid robots that can generalize to having AGI in potentially only a couple of years, I honestly have no idea how the world is going to look in even the next five years. I wish I could just take a peek into the future and see how this all pans out, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Now back to the article, it later states, such a system could perform most economically valuable work better than humans, entailing considerable risks like autonomous cyber attacks or assisting in the development of biological weapons. Saunders also criticized OpenAI's internal security measures. When I was at OpenAI, there were long periods of time when there were vulnerabilities that would have allowed me or hundreds of other engineers at the company to bypass access controls and steal the company's most advanced AI systems, including GPT-4. To minimize risks, Saunders called for stronger regulation of the AI industry. If any organization builds technology that imposes significant risks on everyone, the public and the scientific community must be involved in deciding how to avoid or minimize those risks, he emphasized. This is something we've heard time and time again with OpenAI, their lack of security measures, and taking AI safety seriously. But they're currently working with the US government and now giving them early access to their newest AI models, so I don't think that's something we'll really have to worry about in the future. Speaking of OpenAI, with the recent release of their new O1 Mini and O1 Preview models, along with the imminent release of the full O1 model, they're having no trouble raising funds. It says here, the $6.5 billion funding round for the artificial intelligence startup is oversubscribed, meaning investors were hoping to put in more money than a company was ready to take on, said the people who asked not to be identified discussing private information. One of the people said that the excess demand was in the billions of dollars, and some investors will find out Friday that they did not make the cut. So OpenAI is not going anywhere, people are literally begging them to take their money, and I wouldn't be surprised if OpenAI IPOs soon. Lastly, to end off the video, we have this tweet from Runway announcing a first-of-its-kind partnership with Lionsgate. Lionsgate Studios is one of the largest entertainment corporations in the world, playing major roles in the creation and distribution of some of the most popular movies and TV series like Hunger Games, Twilight, Now You See Me, Saw, and a ton more. This partnership could result in the first professionally produced AI movie or TV show, which would make a lot of noise in the entertainment industry. Anyways, that's all the news for today. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to leave a like. And as always, if you want to stay up to date on future AI news just like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button.